In this video, we're going to look at a pass exam question which requires us to use the simplex algorithm to solve a linear programming problem. Um, so the linear programming problem is written here, uh, maximize p equals kx plus 6y plus 5z, subject to 2x plus y plus 4z is less than or equal to 11, x plus 3y plus 6z is less than or equal to 18, x, y, z are all greater than or equal to 0. So use complete the simplex table, that's the first part, part A. Um, so the, we actually have a partially completed simplex table. Um, so the first row is completed, and that represents the objective function. That says p equals kx plus 6y plus 5z. And the simplex table, we're going to write that as a 1 under the p, and a minus k under the x, a minus 6 under the y, a minus 5 under the z. Okay, now we have to put in the uh, constraints. So 2x plus y plus 4z is less than or equal to 11. So my coefficient of x is 2, my coefficient of y is 1, and coefficient of z is 4. Um, and the less than or equal to 11, so the value on the left hand corner is 11. And we need to introduce these slack variables, s and t. So our first slack variable, we're going to say, we're going to put a 1 in the S column and a 0 in the T column. And then we're going to do the same idea for the second um, inequality restraint. So we have X plus 3Y plus 6Z is less than 3 to 18. So the coefficient of X is 1. The coefficient of Y is 3. The coefficient of Z is 6. And now we're going to have our value is less than 3 to 18. And now the slack variable is now S is going to have 0 and T is going to have 1. So that's the uh, first sort of simplex tableau. Now part B, use the simplex method to perform one iteration for part A, choosing a value in the Y column as pivot. Um, the reason they're doing the Y column, we choose the, the uh, column which has the most negative value in this uh, objective function row. So in this case, minus six in the Y column. So we're going to choose the Y column. Uh, we have to choose a row for our pivot. Now, in order to choose the row for our pivot, we have to divide our values by the uh, coefficient in the chosen column. So we're doing the Y column. So in each case, we have to do 11 divided by one. That's the value is 11 divided by 1. That's 11. And similarly, we're going to 18 divided by 3 equals 6. Um, and these divisions will tell us which row to choose. We choose the row with the smaller positive number. Um, so in this case, um, it's the 6. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So we're going to pivot around this third row in the y column, the value 3. Okay, so we've chosen our pivot, which is the value I've circled. Um, we now need to actually do the uh, pivot operation. So we want to turn this, run the 3, we want to turn this into a 1. So to row 3, in order to turn row 3 into having a 1 in the y column, we're going to divide, we're going to turn row 3 is going to be replaced by row 3 divided by 3. So we're going to divide row 3 by 3. So 0 divided by 3 is 0, 1 over 3 is 1 third, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 6 over 3 is 2. 0 over 3 is 0, 1 over 3 is 1 third, 18 over 3 is 6. Okay, so now we've uh, created our nice new row 3. Now, in row 2 and row 1, we want to get zeros in the y column. So how are we going to do that? Well, for, for row 2, we currently have a 1, and we need a row operation with row 3. So if we subtract, if we replace row 2 by row 2 
minus my new row 3. I don't know that as row 3 star. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 4 minus 2 is 2. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0 minus a third is minus 1 third. 11 minus 6 is 5. Um, 2 minus 1 third is 5 thirds. 0 minus 0 is 0. Okay, and we're going to do something similar to row 1. Now, to, we want to get a 0 in the y column. We need, currently, we have a minus 6. So we have to replace row 1 with row 1 plus 6 slots of row 3. When I say 6 slots of row 3, I mean 6 slots of the new row 3. So if I add 6 slots of the new row 3 to row 1, in the p column, 1 plus 6 times 0 is 1. In the x column, we get 6 slots of 1 third is 2. And we add that to the minus k, we get 2 minus k. In z, we have minus 5, and we have to add 6 slots of 2. So that 6 slots of 2 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. S, we have 0 plus 6 slots of 0 is still 0. T, 0 plus 6 slots of 1 third is 2. And the value common 0 plus 6 slots of 6 is 36. So that's our first iteration. Okay, then part C says, in the case when k equals 1, explain why the maximum value of p has now been reached. Well, this is looking specifically at the case k equals 1. Now 2 minus k is now 1. 2 minus k is 2 minus 1, which is 1. So that means that the top row, we have every value is non-negative. And once we get non-negative values in our top row, then we're finished. So um, we can write down finished as all values in top row are greater than or equal to zero. Um, now the question, the question also says, write down the maximum value of k. Well, that is just the value. So max k is equal to 36. Sorry, I said maximum value of k. Uh, I should say maximum value of p. Maximum value of p is 36 when k equals 1. Okay. Now the trend says, in the case where k equals 3, perform one further iteration and interpret your new table. So now, this final table, um, we're going to say k equals 3. Um, so now the top row is 1, minus 1, 0, 7, 0, 2, 36. So because we have a minus 1 in the x column at the top, that's going to be the column that we're pivoting around. Um, so now we have to decide which which row to pivot around. So same again, we're going to do, we're going to pivot around this X column and we need to do some divisions. Uh, so um, we need to do five divided by five thirds which is 3, and we also need to do 6 divided by 1 third, which is 18. So the smallest positive one is this 3 one. So we're going to pivot around now the second row, because I get the smallest, uh, my value 5 divided by 5 thirds is 3, which is smaller than 6 divided by 1 third. So then my pivot is the 5 third value. Um, so that I've circled. So now we are going to 
replace row two with we want to get a one in that x column in row two so we're going to replace row two with or three fifths of row two so we're going to multiply by we're going to multiply row two by three fifths um so this i get zero times three fifths is zero five thirds times three fifths is one zero times three fifths is zero two times three fifths is six fifths um, one times three fifths is three fifths minus a third times three fifths is minus one fifth and five times three fifths is three so I've now completed my row two operations um, in row one uh, remember this two minus k since k was three so that's minus one so we now have to add we want to turn it into a zero so we have to we when we had minus one before so we have to do row one is replaced by row one plus the new row two because then i'll have in the p column i'll have zero plus i'll have one plus zero in the X column I'll have minus one plus one. In the Y column I'll have zero plus zero. Z column I'll have seven plus six over five. Um, is well, let's just that as decimal plus eight point two. In the S column I'll have just three fifths. T column I'll have two minus a fifth is nine fifths, and then value will have 36 plus 3 is 39 okay and row 3 we had a mi we had a one third before so i have to replace row 3 we're going to go with uh row 3 minus one third row 2 star or to stop in the new version of row two. Okay, so then zero, one minus zero is one. Then here we'll have two minus a third times two. Um, sorry, a third of six fifths. So that's two. It's two minus two fifths, um, which is. 8 over 5 and that's when we'll have 0 minus a third of 3 fifths so it's minus 1 fifth the t column will have a third minus a third of a fifth so it's a third mi uh, plus a fifteenth which is 4 fifteenths uh, no It's, uh, sorry, I just made a mistake there. Um, so it's row three, which is one third plus a fifteenth. So it's a third plus a fifteenth. So it's five, it's six fifteenths, which is the same as two fifths. And then finally we'll get five minus, sorry, six minus a third of three. So six minus one is five. So this is my final table. Um, and how do you know it's the final table? Well, the top row are all greater than zero. So we ha we have finished. The question says to interpret the table. So C part two. Now the maximum value is now 39. Remember this is the case when, when K equals one max p equals 39 and how do what is what are the corresponding values of x y and z for that well let's look at the columns well in the x column we have two zeros and a one so we can just read off that the x value is just three in the y column we have two zeros and a one so we can just read off that the y value is five so uh, so this max value of p is 39 
and that's when x equals 3, y equals 5, and z, well the z column has no zeros and no ones, so we know that z is equal to 0. And similarly, the slack variables, the s and t columns, all have, they don't have any zeros, so s equals 0, t equals 0 as well.